Okay, so today we're going to talk about solving equations with rational numbers. So put that at the top of your page with today's date in the top right corner. Now this is taking all the, a couple things you learned, solving equations and rational numbers, and combining them. So first, let's start with decimals. Here we have y minus 17.5 equals 11. I'm going to draw a line down the equal sign. Since it's subtraction, I'm going to do the inverse operation, which is addition. So I'm going to add 17.5 to both sides. So here, that cancels. I'm left with y. And over here, I have 11 plus 17.5. Now, you have to line up the decimals. And you're saying, well, 11 doesn't have a decimal. But you have to put one in, so it would be 11.0. So we'd add those together. 0 plus 5 is 5. Decimal comes down. 1 plus 8 is 8. 1 plus 1 is 2. So y equals 28.5. And you can go ahead and check your answer by plugging it in for y. Number 2. Here we have negative 4.2p equals 12.6. This is multiplication, so we need to, again, do the inverse operation, which is division, divide by negative 4.2 on both sides. Remember, equations, you have to do the same thing on each side of the equal sign. So, I'm just left with P. Here, remember, I'm going to write it out to the side like this. 12.6 divided by negative 4.2. Now, I know my answer is going to be negative because it's a positive divided by negative. So, let's just worry about the numbers. Remember, we don't want to divide by a decimal. So, we have to make that a whole number. Move that over, make that a 42. So since we move that one, we have to move this one, so make that 126. Okay, so 126 divided by 42. Now, if I do it traditionally like this, 126 divided by 42, it's basically seeing 42 doesn't go into 1, doesn't go into 12. How many times does it go into 126? I'm going to estimate, since 4 goes into 12 about 3 times, let's do 42 times 3. 3 times 2 is 6, carry the 1, or sorry, no, carry the 1. 3 times 4 is 12, well, 126. So it goes in 3 times. So I know that P equals negative 3, because remember, it's a positive divided by a negative. Here, we have T divided by 7.5 equals 4. Since it's division, we need to multiply by 7.5 on both sides. Now, that cancels, we're left with T. So, when I do 7.5 times 4, I actually am going to do 75 times 4. 4 times 5 is 20, carry the 2. 4 times 7 is 28, plus 2 is 30. And I count to see how many, de how many digits I have after the decimal. Well, 4 doesn't have any digits after the decimal, but 7.5 has 1. So my answer should have 1 digit after the decimal. So this is going to be my 1 digit after the decimal, and it's going to be 30. Let's think about the reasonableness of this. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 8 is 32. So 4 times 7 and a half should be around there. should be between them 30. So that, that makes sense. So you do the same exact thing you've always done for equations. Do the inverse operation, but now we're dealing with rational numbers. Try numbers 4 through 6 on your own. Okay, welcome back. Take a look at number four. So it's addition, we want to subtract on both sides. So here we're left with m. So 9 minus 4.6, that's going to be tough because we don't have a decimal there. We're going to make it 9.0 minus 4.6. So here we're going to have to borrow, make that a 10. 10 minus 6 is 4, so we borrowed from there, make that an 8. 8 minus 4 is 4, so we have 4.4. So m equals 4.4. Here, we have 8.2 times P, so we're going to divide by 8.2. That cancels. We know our answer is going to be negative because uh, it's a negative divided by a positive. So I want to take 32.8 divided by 8.2, and I have to move that decimal one to the right because I want to multiply... Or sorry, I want to divide by a whole number, so that's going to be 82. That's going to be 328. Now, I'm going to estimate 8 goes into 32 four times. So let's see how many times 42 goes into 328. Or sorry, let's, let's estimate 4 times that's 8. That's, so it fits in perfectly, 4 times. Did everyone see how I did that? 8 goes into 32 about 4 times. So 
uh, it goes in four times. So I figured 82 goes into 328 about four times. And then I tried that multiplication and it worked. So I know that P equals negative four. Remember, negative divided by a positive. For number six here, X divided by 1.2 equals 15. So I'm going to multiply by 1.2, do the inverse operation. So X equals 15 times 1.2. I'm actually going to do 15 times 12. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1, so that would be a 3, 0 placeholder, that's a 5, and that's a 1. So it's 1, 8, 0. Now, if you look in the question, in 15 times 1.2, that has one digit after the decimal, so I know my answer has to have one digit after the decimal, which makes it 18. I could put 18.0, but I don't really need that point zero. Um, and think about it, 15 times 1 is 15, so 15 times a little more than 1 should be a little more than 15, so that makes sense. Again, we're just doing the same exact thing we've always done with equations, just now using rational numbers. Number 7 here, we have x plus 1 ninth equals negative 4 ninths. So what we're going to do, since it's addition, we do the inverse. Same thing as we've always done, so minus 1 ninth, minus 1 ninth. Here's where it gets difficult. You don't do it like this. You don't do it like you typically would do addition or subtraction. I'm going to do it off to the side. So it's negative 4 ninths minus 1 ninth. I know that the denominator stays the same. So now I can just worry about my numerators. Negative 4 minus 1. Well, keep, change, opposite. Negative 4 plus negative 1 is negative 5. So your answer would be negative 5 ninths. Same thing for number 8. We are going to, since it's subtraction, we're going to add. So we're going to add, we are going to add 1 eighth. To both sides because we want to isolate the variable because that cancels so now we have I'm going to write it to the side again and I you should do the same thing 9 sixteenths plus 1 8 well here we don't have common denominators I could multiply 16 by 8 and 8 by 16 but I know that 8 goes into 16 twice so I'm just gonna multiply this by 2 and this by 1 and remember whatever you do to the denominator you got to do to the numerator so that gives us 9 sixteenths plus 2 sixteenths, which gives us 11 sixteenths. So x equals 11 sixteenths. Let's try this one. Now, here's where it gets difficult. This is 3 fifths times w. So what I actually have to do is divide by 3 fifths. Divide by 3 fifths. And this is going to kind of be weird, right? Dividing by 3 fifths. Remember, we could do Dora method here. Keep, change, reciprocal. See how I flipped that one? Okay, now, just multiply straight across. 3 times 5 is 15. 16 times 3 is 48. So we have 15 over 48. Not done yet, though. Got to reduce, right? 4 plus 8 is 12, so I know that can be divided by 3. 1 plus 5 is 6, so I know that could be divided by 3. So that gives us 5 sixteenths. So W equals 5 sixteenths. See, here, 3 fifths was being multiplied by W, so we needed to divide by 3 fifths, which is the same as multiplying by 5 thirds. Okay, try these three on your own. Okay, welcome back. So here we have and plus 2 sevenths, so we're going to subtract 2 sevenths. Again, I'm going to do it off to the side. Negative 3 sevenths minus 2 sevenths. I know my denominator is 7, but what about the numerators? Well, we have negative 3, keep, change, opposite. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. So we have negative 5 sevenths. Number 11 here. Y minus 1 six equals 2 thirds. Well, we're going to add 1 6 to both sides. So now let's do it off to the side. 2 thirds plus 1 6. Well, I know that 3 goes into 6, so I can multiply that by 2, that by 1, and I'm going to get 4 6 plus 1 6, which is 5 6. And number 12. 
This is 5 sixths times x. So I need to divide by 5 sixths. Divide by 5 sixths. Remember, we don't divide by fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to do keep, change, reciprocal. Okay. 6 times 5 is 30. 5 times 8 is 40. So ending in a 0, divide by 10, right? So that gives us 3 fourths. So x equals 3 fourths. Okay, remember, you are, you're solving these the same exact way you solved equations, but now we're adding fractions and decimals.